Hi, I, my name is Kirsten. I'm American. I suppose being Irish, because we're such a small country in Europe, we're much more aware of external influences and much more aware of what happens around the world, especially in Europe. I am an American. Um, that is my nationality, and it impacts me probably very greatly. Um, I can't imagine many more places on Earth that it would be more benefit to have been born here. Perhaps because I lived overseas when I was in my teen years and early 20s, and I speak other languages. So I understand what it is to be among quote-unquote strangers. Uh, I don't really find nationalism appealing to me because in my view we're all human and I consider myself a world citizen. Uh, I was born to Australian parents. They immigrated to the United States uh, in the 70s um, and I'm glad for it. Though Australia is a fantastic place. Does it inspire imperialism? Uh, I think it does. Or I should say, it doesn't inspire imperialism, but it can be used to propagate policies that are imperialistic in nature. Yeah, it can, definitely. It depends how strong the nationalism is. It depends if it's the kind of nationalism that regards other countries as less valuable or other citizens as less, I suppose, less worthy or less valid. You can be very comfortable in who you are, your place in your society, the grand successes of your culture as you see it and not feel it necessary to make it a, uh, a hegemonous export onto the rest of the world. I get very upset with people here when they post things on social media saying, oh, I hope you know no more Americans die in Afghanistan or Iraq or wherever. And I, it makes me really sad and upset and frustrated and angry and all those things because I'm thinking, well, what about all the innocent civilians that we're killing? I mean, don't you care about those people? Are they not human to you? <laughs> and I think the answer is they're kind of not. They're ignored. They're invisible. Nationalism need not inspire uh, imperialism. But I think probably it often could. Certainly it did. And especially looking at what America has done um, within my lifetime and even decades before. We have, we're doing what I would consider as neo-colonization and nation building. And we're using nationalism as a way of brainwashing people and using it as propaganda to commit wars of aggression. It allows us as a nation to think we are better than other groups, other countries and not care about the human cost. Advantages creating social cohesion across millions of people who never meet each other who will be prepared to pay high tax rates to support education and health for someone they will never know. Arguably, perhaps the only way to create um, a functioning nation state of beyond a certain size is to use nationalism, because you have to bind people in some way. I don't see any advantages except to motivate the masses, similar to religions or you know, before we had nation states, the call to the tribe. Tribalism is an inherent part of the human nature, and it's never going to go away. The question is how we can channel it to a more productive use. If you have a country like Russia, where it's completely corrupt, there's very little social mobility. Nationalism is a very handy tool of distracting people from the crisis at home and trying to find an external enemy. And that's a destructive nationalism, because obviously countries like Ukraine suffer and the Russian people themselves don't gain either. And in fact, you create something that is hard to control. I can think of plenty of disadvantages, especially historically. But um, an advantage of nationalism, I think, comes from just uh, the natural in-group uh, feelings, um, the, the societal bonds, those things that say we are together more than we are apart. The American nationalism is basically saying anyone can be American if they subscribe to a certain set of values. So that's why it handles immigration much better. But Europe, especially mainland Europe, more, more so than England or Ireland, nationalism is much more about your bloodlines, generations back, your culture, that kind of thing. So it's more exclusive, which is why we see perhaps the migrants in France having a much bigger difficulty fitting in than, say, somewhere like England, where it's more individual-based. In what way does nationalism influence Europe's way of handling refugee crisis? I think Europe, uh, as would probably any 
fairly homogeneous cultural uh, institution uh, be rather frightened by an influx uh, rapidly and in large numbers of, of foreigners. Um, I don't think that that human feeling is escapable. I think it's not so much nationalism as the tone that is set from the top of the country or from its historical record and from the politicians in power. So politicians can choose if they want, they can lead in this and they can counteract negative public perceptions about immigrants. For example, they can make it clear again and again in their speeches that immigrants in fact add rather than take away from the economy. They put more public services and they take out all these things. As an American, I, even though I do try to follow the news as closely as I possibly can, it's a little bit difficult because I'm not on the European continent, so I'm sure there's a lot that I'm missing. However, um, because I do make an effort to follow it, I've seen some of the most egregious examples of how nationalism is being used to justify inhumane treatment of these people who are fleeing. I can only imagine that, that a nationalist would feel that an influx of refugees or immigrants, as, as they do here in the United States as well, um, would, would dilute the culture. What was the culture before will be, uh, will be impacted and it won't be the culture again. Um, and if your feelings of, of nationalism, your pride in your nation is predicated on the um, homogenous nature of your culture, then uh, refugees and immigrants are, are not going not to help you maintain that. Uh, even though if you look at the statistics, it's not really going to change the um, overall demographics of their country very much, the minuscule amount. It depends on what kind of nationalism it is. Hungarian nationalism, arguably exclusive nationalism, refugees are the other, they're Muslims. We don't want any of them, especially Eastern Europe. Perhaps the more established, secure, and um, not complacent, but the more self-confident nations can handle refugees better because they, they don't get all worried about them being an existential threat. The most egregious examples are pretty blatant and are definitely driven um, by their own words, most of the time by nationalism. For example, Hungary's prime minister talking about how he is trying to defend the Christian European cultures and values. Um, that journalist, female journalist that was captured kicking and tripping people, including that father holding his child, who fell to the ground and got caught by the police. Um, I don't know if it's reflective of the entire population of Hungary, that they're all very xenophobic and Islamophobic, or if it's um, just the squeaky wheel gets the attention, um, gets the oil. Nationalistic impulses probably do very much uh, influence everyone's first guttural instincts towards an invasion of foreigners. Um, but from a humanitarian standpoint, from a longer view standpoint, from a global citizen standpoint. Um, I don't think the mere fact that my nation might change is a good enough answer to, to prevent or actively harm people who are seeking refuge. So nationalism itself is not a negative or positive. For the refugee crisis. It depends how it's used in the different countries, the kind of nationalism that exists. I find it very saddening. Um, it's really showing the worst of our humanity. And I hope that we can learn to be better than this, and I hope that it's going to change soon, because there are a lot of people that are suffering and dying. And it also affects the way we start these wars to begin with in places like the Middle East and Central Asia and cause these refugee crises. Those are my thoughts. Hopefully it's worth your time listening. Thanks.